Gong Hei Fat Choi, Chinese New Year is just around the corner and what better dish to share than this? It's sweet, sour, salty, spicy with those Sichuan pepper corns. It's Sichuan Hot Pot. It's Wednesday, it's Wok Wednesday. Welcome back, I'm Jeremy from School of Wok. Here's a proper spicy hot pot. First things first, we're gonna start with a classic base of ginger, garlic and spring onion, finely chopped. Get them in to a pestle and mortar, and we can keep going. Next up, I've got my fermented black beans here, which aren't black black beans, they are black salted soya beans. And they're either salted in like a liquid brine or just in dry salt. And they're quite strong in flavor. You do want this soup to be really powerful. So I've got about two to three tablespoons of that in there. Some Sichuan peppercorns. If you want to go classic Sichuan hot pot, you're talking about a tablespoon of peppercorns. And these aren't peppercorns, they're actually a berry that comes off a type of ash bush. And very classic to Sichuanese cuisine, and native to Sichuan. So give that a good crush along with the ginger, garlic and spring onion. So what you're looking for is quite a coarse paste. And this is sort of the base sort of salty, sort of warming spice flavor. And you're gonna to start to fry this on a medium heat in a fair bit of oil. And what you're essentially doing is we're creating like a base chili oil before we make up this hot soup with the rest of the stock. You'll smell the black beans and the Sichuan peppercorns hitting that hot wok quite quickly. And if you're not sort of the biggest fan of too much spice, then perhaps the soup isn't quite right for you. But you could, of course, if you're cooking at home, just use less Sichuan peppercorn and less chili. Because in a second, I'm gonna to start to add in this chili paste, which is called doubanjang or top, uh, or chili bean paste, which is essentially a fermented broad bean and chili paste. And I'm gonna use a fair bit of this to get this color and really sort of deep red f flavor and color to the soup. And that's all gonna go into that paste and cook off together. The chili bean paste sort of sits out in massive pots in Sichuan, fermenting for months on end. And I like the paste that you can get where you kind of see big chunks of chili, dry chili in there. It makes it more traditional. Some cinnamon or cassia bark. Just break that into there. Which actually cinnamon, it's probably more of a hot spice than a sweet spice. A lot of the people think cinnamon's quite sweet. If you bite into it, it, gi it gives a sort of lingering heat on your tongue. I've got some dry red chilies, of course, because there's not enough chili in there. It is Sichuanese cooking, and this, I mean, they're famous for their Sichuan pepper and your chili. The two work together hand in hand. Some bay leaf, and then some star anise. So three or four, and a few cloves to go with that. One thing I don't recommend when you're cooking this is breathing. Just hold your breath. Hold your breath whilst you're cooking it before the liquid goes in. I like to fry this for a good five to six minutes so that all that paste cooks through nice and you get all the flavor kind of sitting into the wok before my chicken stock then goes in. I've got my chicken stock here and I'm just gonna go sort of Couple of spoons at a time to deglaze the wok. Give that a good straight through. Get all the flavour off the bottom of the wok. And this here is called rock sugar. You can see it's kind of like a crystal of sugar. It's got a nice sort of a sort of light syrupy sort of texture to it when it melts into liquid. So I'm gonna get that in and then add more chicken stock. And already, that is looking like a Sichuan hot pot from a restaurant. Now, you can see that I've got an amazing technical ability to hold my breath whilst talking. 
um, for at least sort of six or seven minutes. But you've got to add some uh, rice wine. That's some shouting rice wine to that. I quite like to add it once the stock's gone in, so I get that sort of aroma of that rice wine. And then bring that to a boil. The doubanjang, the um, chili bean paste, it's quite salty in itself, so you shouldn't really need much seasoning. So a Sichuan hot pot, or any type of hot pot, is really a social occasion more than anything else. You know, you have your central pot of bubbling soup, and then loads of different fresh ingredients for everyone to kind of pick and choose what they want to put into the soup themselves. And you just keep going for hours and hours and hours. It's fun. The condiments, in case there's not enough flavour in the soup, are great as well. So I'm just going to make up my own little sauce. I've got some ginger and garlic here. I'm going to add a bit of spring onion to that. And you kind of just sort of pick and choose what you want for your added sauce um, to go over the top. Now I've got some chilli oil here, some sesame paste or peanut butter, just enough chilli just to add to the spice that we've already got. And then I've got some light soy here. I'm going to get a couple of, maybe three spoons of light soy. And this stuff is chinkian black vinegar for a little bit of sour flavour, but not too much. Give that a good mix around. And the idea is then you can dip whatever you want into your own sauce later on. And this stuff is called Sha Cha Barbecue Sauce. It's actually a sort of chilli oil made out of Chilean lizard fish, which is kind of like a giant mud skipper almost. But it's got a really deep, salty flavour, which works a treat. So this is all part of the fun. You, everyone gets to make up their own sauces and then sort of change the flavour as you go. Again, with the rest of the fresh ingredients, you kind of pick and choose as you go. But of course, if you're putting meat into it, you need to make sure it's well cooked through before you take it out. Just for ease, I'm going to show you a quick bowl or plate to set, that I'm going to set up for myself. We've got some lovely choy sum here, and I'm just going to break this up so it's easier to eat. We've got some sh different types of mushrooms, some shimeji mushrooms, some inoki mushrooms. I'm just kind of lay it into my sort of large sieve. You can get little ones as well. Some lovely lotus root, and this stuff is a bean curd, dried rolls of bean curd skin, which add a great bit of texture to whatever you're cooking. Really, you can use whatever vegetables you like. Some gai lan, Chinese broccoli. Now I'm gonna dunk this stuff straight in to my soup. Now you can see with that tofu skin, it's softened within sort of under a minute I quite like to keep my veg nice and crunchy, so I'm going to take that out now. And this is the beauty of hot pot, is that you can pick and choose how well cooked your veg is or not. It's, you know, it's completely up to you, each individual. And whilst things are cooking, you've got time to chat and just enjoy each other's company. I'm going to take some of these noodles as well, why not? I've got some sweet potato noodles. And some shrimp noodles. They've already been soaked, so they won't take long to cook at all. They just need reheating, really. And those noodles will pick up a whole load of those chilies. And then usually you've got a nice combination of different styles of meat. You can get these rolls of beef in a Chinese supermarket, really thin slices of beef, and these cook in sort of seconds because it's so thin. I'd recommend if you're gonna do it like I'm doing it, get your beef done first so you can start eating something. And then your chicken, of course, needs a bit longer and your prawns, you know, so you can dish those up later on as you go. Now that that hot pot has been going for a good 30 minutes or so. I've taken some of the extra bits out just so that we can just keep cooking and not have to worry about fishing all the chilies into our food. So prawns don't take long to cook at all. So I'll put a couple of those in and then maybe a few slices of this chicken thigh meat, which has been thinly, thinly sliced. Both would take sort of two to three minutes to cook up. But 
you wouldn't usually eat the hot pot like this, everything in one go. The idea is that you just keep going a little bit at a time as you're chatting away. Ideally, you have a set of cooking chopsticks and then you have your own eating chopsticks so that you don't mix the two up. Now you can see, even after sort of only a couple of minutes, if your chicken's really thinly sliced, it cooks really quickly. So, my wonderful plate of Sichuan hot pot, where I've just picked and chosen what I want on my plate, which is a bit of everything. <laughs> That is wonderful. It's definitely got what the Sichuanese call ma la, which is like numbing, spicy feeling. Oh, and I could just keep going at it. If you like this recipe, you want to know more about not just Sichuanese cuisine, but any type of Asian food, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ding, hit that com below. <laughs> What's it called? What is the <laughs> Ding, hit that notification bell. And we'll see you soon.